Hi, I'm Deacon Rob, and I welcome the children in our religious education program to today's lesson. The topic for today's lesson is the Holy Mass. But let me begin with a challenging question to all of you out there. The question is, what is the greatest prayer of the Catholic Church? Is it the Apostles' Creed? A creed of our faith, our belief in God and the, the Catholic Church that was given to us by the 12 apostles? Or is it the Lord's Prayer, a prayer given to us by Jesus Christ when his apostles asked him, teach him to pray? Or is it the Hail Mary, another very important prayer? It's a tribute to Mother Mary. Words in the Hail Mary were taken from Scripture when the age of Gabriel said to Mary, Hail, full of grace. And her cousin Elizabeth said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And the final choice is none of the above. I'll give you a few seconds. Is it the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, or none of the above? Well, I'll tell you right now, if you pick the Apostles' Creed or the Lord's Prayer, and the Hail Mary, which are all important prayers, you are wrong. It's none of the above. So what is the greatest prayer of the Catholic Church? The greatest prayer of the Catholic Church is the Mass. Yes, the Mass is the greatest prayer of the Catholic Church. The Mass is actually a Eucharistic prayer. It's a prayer of the Eucharist. The Eucharist. The Eucharist, as defined in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, is the source and summit of the Christian life. I like to look at it as the source and the highlight of our Catholic faith. We believe that the Eucharist is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was given to us by Jesus at the Last Supper, the Last Supper on Holy Thursday. Now, many of you say, the Mass? I thought that's when we go to church. And you're right, because the Mass is a Catholic service. But it's a Catholic service to celebrate the Eucharist. Again, it's the Eucharist, the center of our faith. And people gathering to celebrate the Mass, we call the assembly. And it's only a priest that could lead the assembly in this most sacred celebration. Now, the Mass consists of four parts. The introductory rites, liturgy of the Word, liturgy of the Eucharist, and the concluding rites. The introductory rites unite, unites all of us as a community. It prepares us to hear God's Word and to celebrate the Eucharist. What you heard was just the bells. And in the introductory rites, the first part is the entrance song. And the bells announces the start of the Mass. It's to get everyone's attention that the Mass has started. Everyone stands, and the choir and the assembly, they start raising their voices, singing and praising God. As the altar servers leads the ministers and the clergy down the aisle to the altar, the ministers are the lectors and the Eucharistic ministers. When they arrive at the altar, they bow before the altar. It's reverencing the altar. And then the altar servers and the ministers take their seats, while the clergy, they go behind the altar, and they kiss the altar. It's a, another sign of reverence you know, to the altar. After the entrance song, we have the greeting. Well, the priest uses the Roman Missal, which is a book. It contains all the prayers and chants for the celebration of the Mass. And the greeting starts with the priest in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he greets us in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. And we respond, and with your spirit. After he says... The greeting announces the Mass. The next part is the penitential act. 
It's coming together as God's family with confidence. Let us ask the Father's forgiveness for the full, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. And that's what he opens it up with. And at that point, we remember our sins and ask for God for his mercy and forgiveness by saying, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts. And, and it goes on and on. And then it pretty much finishes with asking for, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And then we sing Gloria, the songs of the angel. We praise God, a prayer of giving glory to God. And it was the songs of the angels, as I mentioned, sung at Christmas Eve to the shepherds in the field when Jesus Christ was born. The opening prayer, the priest prays. It's a special grace for us. And he starts with, let us pray. And then he prays the opening prayer for that day, for that Mass. And then comes Liturgy of the Word. Now, Liturgy, there's Liturgy of the Word and Liturgy of the Eucharist. It's a public prayer worship of the Church where we witness to God and to one another that we are a people of faith, a community of believers united to serve God and His people. So in the Liturgy of the Word, we hear about God's great love for His people, and the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. On Sundays, we listen to three readings from the Bible, the first reading, second reading, and a gospel reading. Now, all the readings comes from the lectionary. The lectionary is a book containing the readings from the Bible that we use at the Mass. And the lector is usually the minister who reads from the lectionary. The minister... The lector would read the first reading, responsorial psalm, and the second reading. So let's get into the first reading. The first reading, we listen to God's Word, and the God's Word is usually from the Old Testament. It recalls God's saving action throughout history, from the beginning all the way up until the, we come to the New Testament. And after hearing the first reading, we respond to God's Word in singing or praying a psalm in the responsorial psalm. Then the lector does the second reading. And the second reading is from the New Testament, often from one of the letters of St. Paul. After the second reading, we have the gospel acclamation with the assembly. We all sing alleluia to praise God for the good news, the good news of the gospel. And that will be the next reading. The Gospel reading is the last reading, and it's from one of the four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And these are of the good news of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, and only a deacon or priest at a Mass would proclaim the Gospel. After the readings, we have the homily. It's the priest or the deacon that gives the homily. They explain the meaning of the readings and teaches us about our Catholic faith. They also help us understand God's word and how to live it. Then we have our profession of faith, and this is very important. We say it at every Sunday Mass, at every Mass. We proclaim our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. The children... You all learn the Apostles' Creed, but at Mass we always say the Nicene Creed because this is stating our belief and also the teachings of the Catholic Church. Then we have prayer of the faithful. We pray for the needs of the Church, the world, and our local community. As a community, we pray for these things. And at the end of each of the uh, items, I would say, or well, the lector would say, let us pray to the Lord. And you would respond, Lord, hear our prayer. And that is the liturgy of the word, which consists of the three readings, the homily, our profession of faith, 
and prayer of the faithful. Next, we have the liturgy of the Eucharist. Now, the liturgy of the Eucharist is the part of the Mass, a very important part again, when the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ, which we receive in Holy Communion. Liturgy of the Eucharist consists of three parts as well, the offertory, the Eucharistic prayer, and the communion rite. The offertory, or the presentation and preparation of gifts, begins as the ushers take up a collection, the collections for the church and for the poor. And then the members of the assembly bring these gifts of bread and wine and our collection towards the altar and the clergy accepts these gifts and prepares the altar. The priest prays that God will accept our sacrifice. These gifts are a sign that we give to God all that we are and all that we have. Then the priest, in the name of the entire community, prays the Eucharistic prayer the church's greatest prayer of praise and thanksgiving. And this prayer of thanksgiving is the center, the center focus of the Mass. We give thanks and praise to God. We sing an acclamation of praise, holy, holy, holy. And the next comes the consecration. This is when the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. We see the bread and wine, and we see the actions of the priest. Again, we hear the bells. It's to call our attention. This is when the priest is holding his hands over the offering. He calls down the Holy Spirit with these words, Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's during this prayer that the next... Uh, it's during this prayer the priest says and does what Jesus said and did at the Last Supper. And that is, he takes the bread and raising it above the altar says, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Next, he takes the chalice and raising it above the altar says, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. At that point, through these words and the actions of the bread and wine and the Holy Spirit, the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. We have the communion rite. Now that we have received, this is to, we, we now prepare ourselves to receive Jesus Christ in Holy Communion. by saying the Lord's Prayer, and then the sign of peace. The sign of peace. We offer each other the peace of Christ. Now, Jesus wants us to be at peace with each other before we receive the Holy Communion. And then we have the Lamb of God. It's at this point we pray for, again for forgiveness and mercy and peace before receiving Holy Communion. We have the Communion. We come forward towards the altar. We receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Communion means coming together. At this point, when we receive, we become one flesh in Holy Communion with Jesus Christ. So the liturgy of the Eucharist is the offertory, the Eucharistic prayer, and a communion rite. Next, we have the concluding rites, the final part of the Mass. In receiving the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion, 
We have been nourished by the celebration of the Eucharist, The priest gives us the final blessing. We receive God's blessings. And the priest or deacon dismisses us as he says these or similar words. The Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. We are now sent to love and serve the Lord each day. We bring the peace and love of Jesus to everyone we meet. We live the message of the Eucharist as a follower of Christ. As you leave the uh, parking lot, you see a sign at the end. It says, you are entering mission territory. So the Mass is the greatest prayer of the Catholic Church and has four parts. The introductory rites, liturgy of the Word, liturgy of the Eucharist, and the concluding rites. And you have just learned that the Mass is the greatest prayer of the Catholic Church. God bless you.